Well, praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> what more can I say after listening to that beautiful song by the William Brothers? I'm still here. Is anybody still here? Hey, amen, amen. What a beautiful song. I tell you, I marvel at how God has given gifts unto men. Amen. And some use it to the glory of God, and then some use it with other agendas, amen, but I thank God for those that use it for God's agenda, amen, because when you're using it for God's agenda, amen, everything is going to work out all right, and that's why we're still here, amen, we have another opportunity to come on the air and give God some praise, another opportunity to tell somebody that Jesus yet save another opportunity, amen, each and every day that his mercies are renewed to get it right, amen, amen, tomorrow is not promised to us, but we like to greet each and every one of you all in the name of Jesus, how many are really excited about this new year, amen, I'm not talking about all of us that have made resolutions, but just excited excited about the new year and excited about what God is doing in your lives. Oh, I'm excited. Amen. We've been, we have been having a beautiful time in this new year on this radio broadcast, and truly we thank God for each and every one of you that tune in every day, all of our listeners out in radio land, those that listen live on the internet, those that come on the chat room, those that call in, we appreciate you. Amen. And we may not can see you in the visible. Amen. But we can feel your spirit. We feel your prayers. We feel the love. Amen. And that's all that matters. Amen. So we're excited again today to have one of our favorite, amen, one of our favorite bishops, amen. He is known as the bishop that is just talking out loud, amen. And I tell you, that's how I met this wonderful, awesome man of God on Facebook. And I tell you, I've never seen him posting anything negative. Everything he posts is inspiring and it's encouraging, amen, and I thank God for that. I thank God for this divine connection. Truly, I don't take it for granted, and I don't take it lightly, amen. So we welcome you once again to a time of reflection with New Destiny Ministries where we are empowering souls to pursue their destiny. How many know that we have a destiny to pursue, amen? So we bless the Lord for each and every one of you, amen, this radio broadcast has been mandated to teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we stand firmly on our foundational scripture in Ephesians 2 and 20 that says we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We are here to encourage, enrich, enhance, enlighten, and empower listeners to trust God in every area of their lives, naturally and spiritually, and to pursue their God-given destiny without apology. Amen. We air Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that's 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, and it's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Saturday, our segment, our Saturday segment host is Minister Billy Burns out of North Carolina, and she hosts a show that is dedicated to those that have powerful testimonies about what God has done for you. So we invite you to tune in on Saturday morning and be with her and share your testimony. And that airs at 
5 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. In California, that's, that's early on a Saturday. But those of you that's on the East Coast, it's at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So call in if you're, if you're up and you're praying and you'd like to share something with her, with her listeners. She certainly will welcome you to tune in. And on early Sunday morning, we have 30 minutes of prayer at 7 a.m. Amen. And all of our segments, you can reach us at 858-683-1334. We invite you to also tune in to our website at www.newdestinyministries.com, and you can listen to these messages in their entirety. Also, we're on Facebook. Visit our Facebook page at New Destiny Ministries and like us. And we're also on Twitter at New Destiny 54. Amen. We welcome you to uh, send any praise or, or praise or prayer reports that you may like to, for us to share on this broadcast to New Destiny Ministries, Post Office Box 5702. Stockton, California. You can also hear these messages on blogtalkradio.com, and they are archived, and we're also on YouTube. So if you're here to minister for us, we, we have a YouTube channel, and you can go back and listen to your messages on that, on that uh, uh, Internet. Amen. So we thank God for you. This is a gift that you can share with others. You say, how is it a gift? Is it a gift? Well, it's a gift because anytime you can share the gospel with somebody else, it's a gift. It's a gift that God has freely given to us. Amen. But it's going to cost us something. Amen. So we just thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Again, we welcome our speaker for today, and that's none other than Bishop Jesse E. Grant. Amen. We're excited about Bishop. Anytime we extend the invitation, he always uh, uh, comes on and graciously bless us. Amen. I also see Elder McCoy on the line. Amen. And I just want Sister Ruby, if she would, to open up Elder McCoy's line and we haven't seen him for a while, but we love him. He has been a very great supporter of this ministry, so we just want to uh, uh, open up the lines and just hear a word from Elder McCoy, and I'm going to let him open up with the word of prayer, and then the next voice you'll hear will be our speaker of the hour, and that's none other than Bishop Jesse E. Grant, a faithful tabernacle in Emerson, Illinois. Amen. God bless you, Elder McCoy. God bless you all, and uh, we're just glad to be back on the Lost Hope Radio. And we just give praise to God for uh, those who facilitate uh, God on this radio, and we thank God for uh, those who have ministered on this radio, and we're going to just go right to prayer, and we just tell the church, don't stop praying. Uh. The Lord is not. God, we thank you right now, and we glorify your name, God, because you're worthy of praise. And, God, you're worthy of honor and the glory. God, we ask you to bless each one that will be hearing of this word. Oh, God, we pray that you, oh, God, would even show yourself in demonstration and mm. power of the Holy Ghost. I, God, in this hour, God, uh, through this bishop, God, bless him now and bless, I, God, your people is our prayer in Jesus' name, and we say amen. Amen, amen. Bishop uh, Jesse, Bishop Grant, amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen, amen. We just welcome you today. We are always excited when we have this opportunity. So we just love you, Bishop. So we don't have a topic this month. We're just doing like the young people say, freestyling. So whatever <laughs> the Lord lay on your heart, we freestyling this month. And I tell you, Bishop, as we've been uh, blessed to continue on in this month and see the year progress. God has just been opening up doors. And I tell you, we had testimony service on Tuesday. We even had one of our pastors, he's engaged, 
Amen. I tell you, God has been oh, blessed and blessed and yeah, blessed. We the Lord. had Mother Cannon on yesterday near you out of Lansing, Michigan, and put right, the powerful right. word on the power of prayer. So, Bishop, we love you. So it's in your hands at this time. Praise the Lord to everyone, and God bless you. Uh, to you, my dear beloved friend, uh, Evangelist Adrian Bernard. And once again, as always, I'm ex- extremely grateful for an opportunity to come and to be able to share this time with your vast listening audience and certainly to your beloved uh, co-host, Evangelist Ruby Laurie. Uh, we say praise the Lord. And to Elder McCoy, uh, such as a, a wonderful, timely prayer. Uh, <clears throat> we want to say happy Uh, New Year, even though we're almost at the end of uh, the first month of the year, but uh, since it was, I believe the last time I engaged your audience was on uh, New Year's Eve, so I'm grateful to be able to have an opportunity to be able to come back and to share with you on today. Um, Ironically, uh, this morning when I arose uh, rather early, uh, and I was thinking, I said, Lord, there was one message that I was dealing with that I wanted to present, and uh, while sipping on a cup of coffee, the Lord switched it. Uh, he's known for doing that. He'll give you a message uh, that you think is for a particular people in a particular time, and then he'll switch it. And so that's exactly what he's done. Uh, but l- let us uh, open up by praying. Father, again, we thank you, and we are certainly humbled by the fact that you have granted us your grace and your mercy, uh, allowing us, God, once again to engage this program. We ask you, God, now in the precious name of Jesus, that you would word my mouth, that you would hide us behind the cross, that you be glorified, that Satan be horrified, and above all, that your people be edified. So, God, I pray now, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. But as I was thinking uh, this morning about what I wanted to share with your uh, wonderful audience, uh, the Lord brought this uh, to my mind. And so we're going to go to First Peter chapter 2, beginning with the first three verses. First uh, Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 1 and concluding with verse 3. Herein is the reading of the word of the Lord. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sense of milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. When I began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, what shall I say unto these thy people on today? And the Lord gave me the subject matter, Evangelist Bernard. What are you feeding? What are you feeding? As a subtopic to that, uh, how are you feeding it? And when and where are you feeding it? So again, what are you feeding? Now, in order for us to have some some in-depth clarity uh, to the subject matter, uh, we need to understand uh, that feeding is the act of furnishing of food or substance. Its primary purpose of feeding is to be consumed by the partaker, is to be digested so that the body can be thoroughly furnished and nourished, uh, so that the end result will be growth. So uh, you feed for the simple purpose of causing growth to take place. Uh, that growth, uh, the feeding fortifies, it enhances, it, it causes for the body uh, to be developed according to the way it has been fashioned. So by definition, the concept can be applied to the whole of the triune of man. What's the triune of man? Mind, body, soul, or we say spirit, mind, body, and soul, or spirit of man. Now, as I engage this, this topic on, the, on this afternoon, uh, we're going to vasculate between the triune, between the mind, the body, and the soul, and we're going to see what God has to say about how we need to appropriately, adequately, genuinely, consistently uh, feed all three. 
So how does one feed each of these composites? Uh, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance between the three. Uh, just as much time, energy, and effort, and substance to furnish the mind, to furnish the body, and to furnish the soul, it all has to be based upon harmony. Uh, you have to eat right, you have to think right, and you have to have your spirit stirred with the proper instruments which comes out of the Word of God. So let's get into it. So how does one feed uh, 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 the body? Uh, it has often been said that uh, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day uh, because once the body has rejuvenated itself, uh, revived itself, replenished itself, rested, relaxed itself, um, based upon our sleep habits, uh, when we arise the following or the ensuing day, uh, again, they declare that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Why? Because the body needs to be replenished, it needs to be refueled, it needs to be invigorated. All of the nutritions, all the nutritional values that come out of a balanced, appropriate meal helps to furnish the body so that the body can begin to move, uh, function according to the way in which God has designed it. Um, there is on the rise now within our society, uh, a health consciousness attitude where people are trying to eat more healthy, uh, they're eating more nutritional things or things that have more nutritional value, things that have substance, uh, rather than to sit and eat a jelly donut and drink a hot cup of, of sweet coffee, uh, that's not what um, the nutritionists call a balanced meal. Um, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't claim to be. Uh, I'm still yet learning how to eat properly. Uh, eating a balanced meal, eating things in proportion so that um, the body can maintain a good sense of health, a good sense of balance, that we can avoid the various different diseases and illnesses that sometimes invade the body because of the lack of proper nutrition. So the body has to be properly nourished. I recommend, I suggest that people learn how to eat properly. Uh, with all this modern technology today, you can go on the Internet, you can go to the bookstore, you can go uh, to the health food stores, you can listen to TV programs that can tilt tell you and teach you, train you, develop you, equip you, and qualify you to be able to prepare nutritional meals um, so that the proper growth processes can be implemented. So it is with the mind. The mind has to be developed. Uh, it has been stated, once again, one of the old cliches is that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. If you don't exercise the mind, if you don't fuel the mind with proper thinking, uh, then it's going to become eradicated, it's going to become corrupted, and it is going to end up not functioning as God has designed for it to be. The same with the spirit. The spirit of man, the soul of man, has to be fed. But the soul of man is not fed natural food, just as the mind is not fed natural food. However, by the same token, that the mind in and of itself is not fed in, uh, a substance, but there is a substance that comes from what we have partaken, what we have ate, what we have digested, uh, the vitamins, the nutritions that are in the substances of things that we eat health-wise. Those things also help to fuel the brain. Certain vitamins that foods carry, uh, vitamin K, which is found in greens. You have vitamin C, uh, which is found in orange juice. Uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away. All of these different fruits, vegetables, uh, and even certain meats have certain nutritional value that also stimulate the mind. It enables the mind to function appropriately, uh, to be able to facilitate itself so that it lines itself with the body, uh, so that the body then becomes whole, uh, becomes adequate, and being uh, truly developed in the fashion in which God has created it to be. Uh, then the soul, the spirit. Now, there is nothing that we consume uh, that we digest uh, 
uh, from a natural standpoint that fuels or invigorates or furnishes the soul. The only thing that does that is the Word of God. So once again, how do we bring all three things into balance? Once again, we have to eat right. We have to be mindful of what we eat. There's on the rise now, there's a, uh, I believe it was um, First Lady Michelle Obama that's going around the country uh, trying to replace uh, the snack machines in the schools, providing more wholesome nutritional treats for the children to eat to snack on, uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, things that are going to cause them to diminish this rise of obesity in the land. Uh, if you look around today, if I can just kind of uh, just let the Lord really have his way here with us, uh, oftentimes you can see people that are obese because, again, they are not eating properly, uh, they are not eating the right thing, uh, then yet sometimes people are becoming so health conscious to the extent that they're now saying, okay, let me diet, let me find proper nutrition, I need to drop this weight, we uh, exercise, we take long walks, we do things that can diminish the weight. Uh, doctors are constantly telling people that when you're above a certain weight based upon your age, based upon your height, and et cetera, et cetera, that you end up causing the body to not function as it should. One of the main causes of times it has been discovered in the medical industry that many times heart attacks and strokes are caused because of improper eating. Uh, obesity is the number one cause for heart attacks, uh, and it also leads to stroke. Uh, so uh, the body has to be fed. It has to be fed properly. Uh, when God created us and gave us these bodies, he also gave us a mandate, and that mandate is that we're to be good stewards over everything that God has entrusted into our care. So when we are not eating properly, we're out of line, out of the dynamic will of God as it relates to what God wants us to do with what he has entrusted in our care. So again, let's take note of the, of the terminology or the word that I just used, being a good steward over, a good caretaker. We have to exercise these bodies. We have to... Uh, uh, listen to the health experts. We have to look into the Word of God to determine uh, how we should eat and the, the, the various foods and things that we used to eat. Uh, mm -hmm. Eating right leads to healthier lives. A healthier lives lead to a longevity of life. Uh, when you feed the mind, you have to be careful what you allow your mind to be, uh, what you allow your mind to engage. Right thinking produces right actions. Improper I thinking produces improper actions. Oftentimes you wonder why is it now that sometimes someone can go into a school, go into a movie house, and just shoot up everything that's within their uh, purview. It is because sometimes what the mind has been fed. When the mind has been fed a lot of negativity, it also is detected in the body. Uh, that's why uh, we're told and taught, learn how to think wholesome thoughts. Learn to think positive thoughts because those things create a, uh, an, an invigorousness within us. It causes us to be joyous, causes us to be happy. Think happy thoughts. Think happy things so that the body begins to feel the invigoration of what's going on in the mind. If you think sad, the body reacts to that. If you think happy, the body reacts to that. Whatever your thoughts are, the Word of God tells us that whatsoever man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So right. when you think sad, you become sad. Everything about you responds to the way that your mind is trained and developed to operate. So if you're walking around in, in the valley of despair, then the body then loses its quest. It loses its craving to be fed proper nutrition. So again, we're going we're gonna to deal with this. Just kind of bear with me. So you have to learn how to bring those two entities into balance. Think right. Uh, think wholesome thoughts. Think thoughts uh, that cause you to feel good, uh, uh, to express yourself, uh, to be able to laugh, to be able to enjoy yourself. Uh, laughter does the heart like good medicine. So if you want your heart to be invigorated, uh, not only eat properly, eat the right things that will stimulate the heart, not clog, clog up your arteries, 
uh, uh, and all of that so that the blood can flow freely through your arteries that furnishes um, the bloodstream carries oxygen to the main other organs th throughout the whole entire body. So as an end result, eat right and now think right. Bring those two entities into balance. God, what should I be thinking about? Should I be thinking about happy things? Yes, oft, oft times, yes, you should. Absolutely, unequivocally. But by the same token, sometimes we're forced to think other things. But you have to train your own mind as to what you're going to feed it. Are you going to feed it all the garbage that comes over the TV? Are you going to feed it all of the, uh, the various types of the old God music that is played? You have a right. You have an obligation as to what you allow to infiltrate your thinking. When you sit around a lot of people that are talking a lot of negativity, a lot of foolishness, a lot of nonsense, and if you incorporate that into your thinking, then you're going to diffuse your body in such a way you're going to respond to the way that you think. Oh. Okay. Uh, 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 notice, if you will, when you get up in the morning, if you start thinking happy thoughts, your body automatically just kind of joins in. You know, you kind of have a party, so to speak, going on. You know, you get uh, what the, you, you, there was a movie called Happy Feet. Uh, you get happy feet. You get you get some pep in your step because of the way that you think. So now let's move on and let's try now and deal with the soul. How do we furnish the soul? How do we uh, uh, deal with it? Um, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, we have to understand as believers that we have to feed our souls, oh. feed our spirits, feed our spirit with what? With the things of pertaining to the word of God. Uh, again, the spirit also has to be safeguarded just as the mind is safeguarded, just as the body is safeguarded. No one wants to sit up and deliberately eat rat poison. Why? Because it will destroy the body. No one wants to sit up and infuse its mind with a lot of satanic thinking, a lot of thoughts that disrupt our spirits. So again, let's bring everything into balance. Now, if we were to reverse the process and, if, and understand that if we are to think right, have our spirits feel fueled right, feel properly, uh, feel properly, then it in turn, now it begins to feed into the mind, and the mind follows, the body follows what the mind dictates. Okay, oh. we're going it, to, it, it, it'll make sense. We're going to connect the dots. Just hang with me. Uh, so now, again, the soul, uh, uh, what's required? Uh, what's the source uh, that's required to feed the inner man, to feed the spirit, the Word of God. It is in the Word of God that we learn how to conduct ourselves, how to behave ourselves, how to have right attitude, how to have right mindsets, how to live according to the will and the way Ooh. of God. Now, if you don't read it and you don't apply it, then it, 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 it does not feed your spirit. Ooh. I'm rushing. Let me slow down. So now, what you feed will grow. What you starve will die. So let's get into it. What you feed will grow. Okay? Again, let's go back to the natural. We're going to vascularly between the natural, the, the mind, uh, the body, and the soul. If you feed your body properly, uh, oh. it, it, it lends to the, to, to the experience that we're having with our uh, youngest granddaughter, Bailey. Bailey was born uh, May the 31st in 2013. She was a premature child. At the, at the time that she was born, she weighed 3 pounds and 13 ounces. Uh, wow. My wife and I, we were privileged to be there uh, to actually see her born uh, during the mm -hmm. time that uh, her mother, Liza, was delivering her while they chased me out of the room, uh, and I had to go across the hall. But I could hear her when she came into this well. She was crying. Mm -hmm. But when I went back in the room after they had dressed her and got her prepared to be presented to her mom, I was privileged to hold her first. When the pediatric nurse that helped in her assistance to be born handed her to me first, I had the distinct pleasure of then, in turn, handing her to her father, my son, Jason. He, in turn, handed her to the mother that brought her into this world, his wife, Liza. So uh, Bailey had to stay in the hospital for several months, several months, and, and, and diligently we would go and see her nearly every day 
spend time with her, pray with her, and watch her little frail body develop. Now she's in my home today, upstairs with her grandmother, uh, asleep, and, and, and the child now is almost 13 pounds. All right. Uh, we've watched her growth processes. We watched because uh, uh, the doctors had to prescribe a certain kind of formula for her to eat in order to fuel her fuel her little frail little body. Because she ingested it, she digested it, we could see almost as it were just before our eyes how she began to develop, how the weight began to pick up, how she began to focus, and how she began to start making sounds. And then here recently the other day, uh, um, a few weeks ago now, she's being spoon-fed, eight months old. Now she's being spoon-fed. And because she has a craving, notice what I'm about to say, because she has a craving to eat, she alarms the whole entire house when it's time to eat. <laughs> She's not able to talk and say, okay, Grammy, okay, Papa, okay, Mom and Dad, uh, I think I'll have me some uh, uh, um, eggs and, 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 and sausage and some toast for breakfast. Uh, she's not able to tell us what she wants us to prepare for her lunch or for her dinner. But she can make a sound. It's called a distinct cry that I've become uh, acquainted with. Uh, she has uh, uh, basically three different cries now. First cry is when she's hungry. That's one cry uh, because she's craving to be fed. Uh, then the next cry that she has is when she's wet or she needs to have her diaper changed. That's another cry. And then thirdly, her cry now is when she doesn't want to go to sleep, when she's fighting sleep. So there are three distinct cries. So as I watched her, uh, uh, her grandmother was feeding her one day, and I guess Grammy wasn't feeding her fast enough, and she was reaching for the spoon as if to say, lady, you've taken too long, okay? So what that means is that she, she's being developed. Why? Because she's been fed properly. She's been yeah. fed the things that her pediatricians have advised that she begins to eat. So following those protocols, her parents and her grandparents, trying to be good stewards over her, uh, try to make sure that she's eating and drinking the formula that has been prescribed. The end result is that she amazingly is growing by leaps and bounds. Just before I came on the air, I was laying on the bed with her, and she's now starting to roll over, trying to sit up, uh, making all of these sounds and reaching for things and, 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 and so forth. Why? Because she's being fed really physically. So she's growing because she's being fed. Uh, so now uh, my wife and I also many times, and as well as her parents, uh, we have a tendency uh, to talk to her and to laugh with her when she does certain things. Yay, Bailey, yay, Bailey. Uh, because we're happy, we're ecstatic about her development. Now when she does certain things, begins to start rolling over, and sometimes she gets frustrated when she can't really get it together, but once she does, and then we encourage her by saying, yay, Bailey, we clap in our hands, then the expression on her face is laughter. She begins to smile because she's happy with what she's learning how to do and accomplishing it. So again, it's essential, it's necessary to see the body properly so that it grows. By the same token, one has to also learn how to think properly, uh, think good things, uh, think things that are wholesome. Uh, the Word of God comes to mind. If there be any virtue, then think on these things, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. Even in the face of devastation, in the face of uh, uh, situations that befall our lives, uh, that cause us sometimes to go into the valley of despair, you've got to feed yourself something that's going to bring you up out of that valley. Uh, you've got to feed yourself the Word of God. Feed your mind. Train your mind how to think properly. Uh, the Word of God says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, you've got to think that, yes, I can do this. I can weather this storm. I can overcome this. Uh, every All sickness is not unto death. Just because the doctor has told you that you have a disease, you have an illness, you have some type of health challenge, learn to fuel your mind differently. Sure, I understand, doctor, what the prognosis and the diagnosis are. I understand that I have to be medication may be required 
or even surgery may be required. Chemotherapy, radiation may be required. However, that's what's got to go into my body. But what's going into my mind is that by his stripes, I'm already healed. So you began to fuel the mind with wholesome, positive things. You fuel the mind with the Word of God because every situation that occurs in the life of the believer, there is an antidote, there is an answer, there is a word from the Lord. You've got to search it. Now, let me slow down again. We as believers have got to understand something very critical here. God just really, really empowered this in my spirit. Natural growth is different than spiritual growth. Natural growth is basically automatic. Spiritual growth isn't. Once again, natural growth is automatic. Every seven years, the body undergoes a different change. It does not mean that your spirit does the same thing. So again, spiritual growth is not automatic. You don't just wake up one day and, 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 and have all of this spirit within you. You don't have all this word in you. Uh, if you don't pick up your Bible and read it, if you don't listen to the Word of God, uh, Come on, then it doesn't just happen by osmosis. Okay? Oh. Natural growth, again, is automatic. The body is designed to grow and to mature. If you handle it right, it will grow right. It will be fueled right. It will respond right. It will work according to the way in which it has been fashioned by God, our Creator. But again, we must be good stewards over it. We must learn to take very good care of it. Don't eat things that are going to be poisonous to your systems. Don't eat things that are going to cause you to become obese. Because now when you do that, you're violating the will of God as it relates to your stewardship got to learn, believers, how to take care of these bodies that God has given us. Again, I'm not trying to, to, to make the message into nutrition, but again, I'm trying to bring us into a reasonable place of balance, how everything has to balance. So now, so as I look at Bailey and her development, I say, God, this is simply wonderful. But Bailey is not advancing spiritually. In time, her parents and I, her Grammy, we will all begin to try and, and teach her the things of God. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he shall not or she shall not depart from it. So spiritual growth is not automatic. It has to be a craving for it. You have to develop the craving for it. You have to see the need for your spirit man to be fed. You have to go into the unadulterated word of God to feed your spirit. When the spirit is fed, it now becomes fortified. It becomes invigorated. You now find out things that you did not know initially. Uh, so now, with all this information that is now transmitted into your spirit by being a partaker, feeding your spirit man with the word of God, that information is now transferred into your mindset, into the corporation of your thinking. Now you can think differently. So the situation looks bad, but your spirit tells you that with Christ all things are possible. So you don't have to fall into the valley of despair in your mind. You don't have to fall into depression as it relates to what's going on in your life. Not if your spirit man has been thoroughly furnished through and by way of the word of God. For again, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So when my mind sees that I'm being challenged by something that is horrific, something that is harmful to me, spirit man stands up reminds my mind that the God that I serve is greater than my circumstance. So, again, the spirit man has to be fortified. The spirit man has to be fed, fed the word of God, the unadulterated word of God. Uh, so now, how do we bring all of that into balance? If you're going to sit down at the breakfast table at your desired point of, of the origin of your day, your breakfast is prepared, so you sit there and you eat it. You have a set time to eat. By the same token, set a set time in which you're going to commune with God. The way to communicate or to commune with God is through prayer. 
set time up where you began to talk to God, that you began to express to him uh, uh, how you feel about him, uh, how you need him to orchestrate the course of your day, charter your way. You have a dialogue between him and yourselves. There is nothing more wonderful uh, uh, that uh, now that uh, my wife has retired, Many times we just sit at the breakfast table and we just laugh and talk and, and enjoy each other's company because when she was working, uh, we didn't often get that opportunity. Sometimes it didn't take place till the weekend. Uh, so I enjoy that. So I'm able to communicate with her. So by the same token, the believer has to learn how to communicate with God. Set aside some time where you can talk to God, and then don't be in such a haste that you leave after you've said everything you had to say and not wait until he has to say to you what he needs to share with you. So it becomes a two-way conversation. Learn how to have conversations with God. The key component is through prayer. That's how we communicate with God. Then set aside some time wherein you feed your mind with the Word of God. You feed your spirit with the Word of God. Once the, the, the Word of God has been fed into your spirit, that information is now put into or transmitted, transcended into your mind. So now, if my spirit is right and my mind is right, and my body is right, then my whole life becomes in alignment with the will of God. Uh, it's, it's like this. It's like this. I, I'm feeling it right about here now. Uh, it's, it's, it's like this. Uh, oftentimes we can go to the grocery store and, and we buy all the things that we think that we need. Uh, uh, my wife says, well, um, let's go down this aisle and go down that aisle, and sometimes she makes a grocery list and most times she doesn't. Uh, so she searches out and she said, well, you go over here and get this, and I'll go over here and get that. So now the basket is being filled. We take all of these stuff home and, and then we put it away and what have you. We put stuff in the freezers upstairs and downstairs, but then sometimes Sometimes we forget what is there, uh, and then we'll go looking and searching, uh, what are we going to eat? We have everything that we need, but sometimes we forget that it's there, so we have to go in search of it. So then there are times she'll ask me, what do you want to eat today? And I'll tell her what I want. Okay, because I have a craving for it. My question to the postmodern-day Christian believer, what do you really crave? Because once again, whatever you feed, it's going to grow. Whatever you starve, it's going to die. If you start feeding your ego, then your ego is going to get inflamed. It is going to end up in causing you to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. If you feed into negativity, negativity is going to consistently grow. That's why you've got to be careful whom you listen to. You've got to be careful about who you evolve in your inner circle with. Don't infuse yourself with people that are always talking negative. Don't always surround yourselves with people that cannot see things the way you see them, especially with what you see is what God has envisioned for you to take a look at. So you want to align yourself with people that's going to help fuel you into the way in which you need to be fueled. Uh, I don't like to hang around people. Uh, uh, when I had my uh, uh, bout with cancer, I tried my level best to not deal with people that were always telling me, well, now you know uh, Josie died with the same kind of cancer, and, and, and my dear, she had the cancer, and she didn't make it. No, I don't need to hang with you. Because I need somebody to furnish, help me furnish, invigorate my spirit, give me nutritional value in my spirit, in my mind, so I can think differently about what the challenge is. So again, whatever you feed, it's going to grow. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you feed uh, negativity, then negativity begins to grow. Now you sometimes wonder, why is it that folks don't want to hang around you? Because everything that comes out of your mouth is negative. Oh, my God, it's cold. Oh, my God, is this too hot? Oh, my God, I don't like this. Oh, my God, I don't like that. Okay, negativity. So now oh. you wonder why, why nobody wants to be around you. Now let me talk 
to the saints of God, okay? And then and, and hang on here with me. Don't 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 hang up. Don't you dare switch that dial, okay? It never ceases to amaze me that here uh, the precious people of God seem sometimes to have the worst attitude. Uh, they seem, some of them, not all of them, uh, they seem to be so mean and, and, and so hateful and, 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 and don't know how to really turn a decent answer. Uh, something's wrong. Something has been said improperly or something has not been said at all. Uh, to be filled uh, with the Spirit of God, we ought to be a happier people. We ought to be a pe- people who are more loving, more compassionate, uh, more kind one to the other. Uh, but now it, it, it seems like uh, we are feeding ourselves what the world wants us to partake of. If you feel right, do it. The devil is a lie. Uh, 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 it, 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 it's causing us uh, to begin to start feasting or digesting on the ways of this world. That's why Paul says that I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way that you can change the way you think is that you've got to learn how to think differently. You've got to have subject matter that you can think on. Think on the things of God. Think how God would handle any number of situations. Uh, So uh, rather than to become bitter and mean and cantankerous, because the more you see that negativity, yes, we all have been hurt. Okay, I'm feeling it, Lord. Thank you here. Uh, So we all have uh, been hurt, and we've been wounded, and and our hearts have been crushed, and and it's been handed back to us in bits and pieces, almost in sawdust. And and, and, then the folks that we've helped the most look like sometimes they hurt us the worst. Uh, The people that you've given your last dollar and a dime to, uh, the very ones to turn their back on you, the very ones that said that they were with you are now the ones that are saying crucify them, crucify them, crucify them. Them, uh, the very one that you've allowed to come into your home, and you've shared all of the luxuries of your home, all the furnishings of your home. You gave them carte blanche to your home, and now you seem to be the worst person that God has put breath in. Yes, we all have been hurt. Yes, we all have had some bad experiences in our interactions with other people. Bad marriages, bad relationships, uh, bad involvements in interpersonal relationships on the job. But again, if I can die Digress here. Read, go and view healing broken relationships. It's on YouTube. Uh, so you cannot keep on feeding your hurt because the more you think about it, the more you think of it, the more you, okay, here comes another hurt. So you add that hurt to the existing hurt. Now something else hurts you. So now you keep on piling the hurt. Now you wonder why all this bitterness is in you because you're not doing anything to get rid of it. Okay, so we're going to get into how to starve some things, uh, uh, but let's stay on track here and talk about the things uh, that we feed that keep on growing. Uh, when you're jealous and envious and full of strife and malice toward what other people have, uh, and you keep on feeding your jealousy, uh, even when the sin that exists in all of us I don't care how saved you are, there are still some proclivities, there are still some issues that we are dealing with. Uh, But now when sin is added to sin, it brings about corruption. So now you wonder why it is that your spirit is so corrupted, why your mind is so corrupted, why it looks like your body is fighting your mind, your mind is fighting your spirit, your spirit is fighting your mind, your mind is fighting your body. Why? Because when sin is added to sin, it brings about corruption. So now you wonder why are you corrupt? Why is your spirit corrupt? Why is it that you can't seem to have the joy of the Lord? You can't be at peace. You can't find happiness. Why? Because you're constantly feeding something that needs to die. Uh, uh, the ill-gotten ways in which you have been treated, you now need to dig inside of the core of your existence and says, I'm not going to feed you today. 
and I refuse to be negative. I refuse to think about how bad I've been treated. I'm going to replace that thought with a positive thought. Then I'm going to line myself up with the Word of God that my spirit is telling me that it's my obligation to treat others right in spite of how they treat me. So I'm not going to sit here with you uh, and feed you. Uh, let's take it to the dining room table, if you will. Uh, set the plates, me, plates mats up and, 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 and the spoon and the knives and the fork and the, and, 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 and the dishes and what have you. Uh, who do you really want to invite at the dinner table? Who do you want to invite for lunch? Who do you want to invite for your breakfast? Well, number one, I don't want all of my anguish, all of my bitterness to come and sit here and feast with me. Because no, no, uh -uh, no, I'm going to remove your place setting because you can't dine with me. Uh, so I need to starve you. So I'm not going to feed you. I'm not handing you anything uh, at all because you need to die. This jealousy needs to die. So get up from the table. Uh, uh, you excuse. Uh, go on somewhere in the corner, crawl up and die because I cannot afford to be jealous. Uh, I cannot afford to be envious. I cannot afford to keep going through life thinking about how bad I've been hurt because when I think of how bad I'm hurt, how bad I've been done, how I've been mistreated, how people have walked up the front of me and down the back of me. Uh, when I think of all of that, now I'm not free to be kindly affectionate one to the other. The Word of God tells me that we are to love one another. So in doing so, then other men will know that we are the sons and daughters of God. But how can they not see that? And the reason they cannot see it, rather, is because I am feeding my bitterness. I'm feeding my anger. Uh, sometimes you wonder, why is it that everybody walks around seeming like they're mad with the whole entire world? Because they keep on feeding the anger. So what you need to do is to take the anger and tell anger, you cannot sit here at the dining room table. You cannot sit here with me and my other guest that have invited, been invited for dinner or lunch or breakfast, you have got to get up from here and you've got to go. Why? Because I must bring everything into alignment. Uh, God has made me a good steward over this body. So now I've got to let the Spirit of God take control of what I think and what I do and how I become. So I must begin in order to grow. I must now have a craving for the sin silk milk of the Word of God. Uh, I must be develop a craving for it. It's like sometimes uh, I'll call my daughter. I say, daughter, uh, dad's got a taste for a peach cobbler, and it's a done deal. So, uh, dad, I'll, uh, I'll make it, and I'll get it right over to you. Uh, I have a craving for it. So by the same token that you have natural cravings, then now begin to develop spiritual cravings. In other words, God, I want the more of you. Uh, uh, all taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Uh, God, I've examined you in times past, and so I found out that that you are my everything, uh, that you are everything that I need. Uh, so, God, now I need to develop a craving for you. Uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon the Lord while he's yet near. Uh, so now, God, I, 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 I want to crave the more of you. Uh, it's like it is naturally. So when you don't get what you're craving for, you're not satisfied. Uh, uh, so how can you... Uh, walk around with, with, with this attitude that, uh, that needs to die. Uh, you're too egotistical. That needs to die because the Word of God tells us to humble ourselves uh, under the mighty hand of God. Uh, we've got to learn how to be humble. Uh, just because you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and having the, of a mighty burning fire and having a mind to run and see what the end is going to be, it's no reason for you to think that you're better than anybody else. So crucify, starve your ego uh, and so that you can feed yourself humility, uh, so that you can grow spiritually, uh, so that others can see uh, by these signs shall all men know that you are my disciples. Why? That you are my children. You are my redeemed. You are the believers. You are the sons and daughters of God. You are joint heirs to the throne of grace. How then can they see that unless we exemplify the love? So if love 
is not being able to be viewed by the outside world, then let me look into me and see what's not allowing it to appear. So if I discover that there is hate in me, I've got to starve my hate. I refuse. You've got to get to the place where you refuse to feed yourself anything that's toxic. If you're not going to eat rat poison to destroy your natural body, then why eat the poisonous of the venom of, 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 of our most arch enemy, Satan. Why do you want to allow him to say, well, now you know what, he treated you this way, treated you that way, so if I were you, no, no, you ain't me, devil. I am God's child. I refuse to feed into that. I refuse to feel this way. I refuse to allow my joy to be overshadowed by my misery. If anything, right. I'm going to not feed my misery. Yes, yes, it's hard, but that's all right, because I'm going to starve my misery to death. Because, again, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So because the joy of the Lord is my strength, then misery you have got to be starved to death. I've got to get rid of you because you're not wholesome to me. I can't grow with all of this down within me. So now I've got to crucify you as it were. Uh, so now as I try to wrap it up a close, I don't want to take up all your time, uh, but I feel my part boiling here. So much more to say, maybe part two oh, the yeah, next yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, but now what you need to recognize is uh, that when now, uh, let's look at it from this standpoint. Uh, when you go to the doctor, the doctor says uh, you need to lose some weight. Uh, and so now here's a diet plan for you. Go and see the nurse. Uh, go and see the oh. dietitian. Go and see the nutrition so that she can tell you how to drop some of this weight because it's not mm-hmm. healthy for you. So now, how do I drop the weight off of my spirit? Paul has the answer. Uh, Paul mm-hmm. says, lay aside every weight and the sin that do so easy to set you uh, that you can run this race with patience. Uh, so mm-hmm. now, it's not so much the sin that is weighing us down, it's the weight. Uh, the care of this life. Uh, you've got to shift the load. Uh, you've got to lay it aside. Uh, uh, just like I hear people all the time saying, well, uh, I heard so many people at the beginning of the year, I'm going to be going on the Daniel fast so I can lose weight. I'm going to take uh, a diet. Uh, they strategize. They come up with a method, a process, a plan, a protocol so they can lose weight. I'm going to drop 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds by thus and so time. Then, okay, let's come back into the spiritual side. Uh, I think that Believers need to go on a spiritual diet uh, because there's some things within your spirit ram that you need to lay aside. Uh, You need to get rid of it because it's weighing you down. Uh, What's the reason why you cannot love one another? Uh, Why is it that you're so mean? You need to lay that foolishness aside. Uh, You need to say to yourself, Lord, uh, I need to drop about 50 pounds in my spirit here uh, so I can feel better. Uh, Every person that I've ever known that's gone on diets and have reached their goal. They've lost the 50. They've lost the 20. They've lost the 10. They feel better. So you want to feel better? Then lay aside the stuff that's weighing you down. The cares of this life. Why should we worry about how we're going to make it? If you get into the Word of God, the Word of God says that he would never suffer the feet of the righteous to be moved. David, come here. Join the conversation. Can we put you on the line, David? Uh, David would get on the line and say, uh, I was once young, but now I'm old. Uh, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. Uh, so now I've got to lay aside all of that foolishness. And, uh, I don't have to worry about how ends are going to be met. Uh, I'm not going to weigh my spirit down. We're trying to figure out how the light bill, the gas bill, the water bill, the mortgage, the card note, the credit card, how that's going. No, no, no. The antidote is this. If I take the proper nutrition out of the Word of God that says if you pay your tithes and give God an offering, then He would take care of the devourer for your sake. Prove me, women, saith the Lord, uh, from the perspective of paying tithes. See if I will not 
open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you don't have room to receive. Throw it away. Don't sit there and seed into how the bills are going to be paid. Pay your tithes, the bills will get paid. Uh, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they you that dwell the therein. Seed your spirit now and crucify your flesh. Crucify the negativity in your mind and say, devil, not today. I refuse to sit here and feel like I'm in Lodi Bar. I refuse to be depressed because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to feed myself the word of God. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So I'm going to starve you. You're trying to bring me down, but I'm going to starve you because the greater one lives inside of me. So now, when you look into your lives and see the stuff that's in you that needs to be crucified, it needs to be buried, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, you've got to go in there and look into you and see what's making you miserable. Why is my attitude so bad. Why is it that I'm so miserable all the time? Here it is. I'm supposed to have the joy of the Lord. I'm supposed to be happy. I'm supposed to be content no matter what state I find myself in, according to the Apostle Paul. Uh, why then is it uh, I cannot lay down and sleep at night? Uh, you were taught as a child. Now I lay me down to sleep. Now, pray the Lord my soul to keep it. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul. Lord, take it from my mind. Because uh, my mind is overwhelmed. Uh, so, God, your word tells me, uh, and if I feed my spirit your word, your word tells me uh, that I can cast my cares upon you. So, God, since you're there, I'm going to hand it to you. Because uh, it's now time for me to say night, night. Uh, and I've got to lay on my bed uh, to take good care of this body and let it rest properly. Uh, but I cannot let it rest properly if I've got all this weight on my brow. So, God, before I roll over and find my comfortable spot in my pillow, pull the cover over my head, Lord, here it is. You told me I could cast it upon you because you carry it for me. So I don't have to sleep with this weight on me. I can shift the load. I can give it to you because God I want to be obedient to you you've put me in charge of this body my mind and my spirit I want to bring everything in balance so because if I'm out of balance you cannot use me properly so I have to now let some things start to death yes you've done me wrong but you're going to start to death today because I'm not going to let what the next person does to me add on to that. No, no. Both of y'all are going to starve. Why? Because I'm realizing that I don't have to deal with it. Because my spirit dictates to my mind, fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down and withered as the green grass. So it's a dismissed thing. Case dismissed. Uh, let's move on to the next thing. Sometimes it's like it is when you have the house. You bought the house, now you're furnishing the house. You look around now, you don't have room in the house. Why? Because you got so much junk. You got so much clutter. You're hoarding. You, you're hoarding everything. Your newspapers from 1910. You know what it is? If you pick it up, it'll crumble. Get rid of it. Throw it out. It's time now. Sometimes uh, they have what's called diuretic teas uh, that helps eliminate the waste that's backed up in our bowels. Uh, I don't mean to sound graphic, uh, but let's go with it anyhow. Uh, so if, if the body needs to be released of all of this toxin, the waste, uh, and if for some reason it does not move out like it should, uh, sometimes uh, different kinds of uh, uh, ax la ex laxatives are used to rid the body of it, to release it. Uh, uh, so now, so you, uh, uh, they have colon cleansers and all this kind of stuff. Sometimes it's been denoted that the colon sometimes can impact as much as five or ten pounds of toxic waste. Uh, so now you're wondering, uh, spiritually, so Lord, why am I so weighted down? Uh, you need an enema. Uh, you need a laxative. Uh, something to run this out of you uh, because you're sluggish. Uh, yes, there is a word I'm looking for. You're sluggish. Uh, you're slow to help others uh, because you're backed up. Uh, 
Uh, you're constipated. Your bowels of compassion cannot be released because you need to be flushed out. So now you've got to go into the Word of God and look at what David said. Lord, purge me with hyssop. Uh, hyssop was a laxative uh, 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 Thing that was used uh, to cleanse the body. Uh, toxic waste needs to be removed. Uh, oh. Don't feed it constantly. Uh, starve it to death. No, no, not today. No negativity up in here today. No, no, I refuse to think that. I refuse to behave that way. You're going to have to starve to death. So now, when the undertaker comes, uh, the medical examiner is called to your home. Uh, what's the problem here, sir? What's the problem here, ma'am? It's some dead things here in this house, uh, some dead ah! things in my life uh, that needs to be buried. Uh, uh, pronounce it dead. Uh, so now the medical examiner comes, uh, and he looks at it, and he says, okay, let me take my, my, my stethoscope and, and put it on the heart of that thing and see, mm, I, don't, I don't feel no pulse. Uh, I don't hear no heartbeat. Uh, I pronounce the thing dead. Uh, so anything that's dead, going back to the old school church, uh, if anything is dead, it ought to be buried. Uh, so hey. with the undertaker, uh, the medical examiner has pronounced this thing dead. Uh, can you go ahead now uh, and embalm it? Uh, go ahead. Hey. We don't have to have a funeral. Uh, we can just go ahead and cremate it. Uh, don't have to spend no money uh, uh, more than necessary uh, to bury this thing. Go ahead and cremate it. Uh, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Uh, now don't you feel better? Don't you feel better when you have cleaned up your house? Gotten rid of stuff that don't don't you don't even have a need of. Got one left you and can't find the right. Throw the left one away. Get rid of it. Uh, uh, clean up from up under the bed. We have a habit. Because uh, we don't want people to see all of what we've got. Uh, the closet is bulging. You can't put nothing else in it. Now you want to stick it up under the bed. Uh, now it's collecting dust up under the bed. Now you're wondering why you're sneezing all the time. Why your allergies are acting up. Clean that junk out. Uh, get rid of it. Uh, uh, change the sheet on the bed. Flip the mattress over. Uh, put some Ooh. new sheets, some fresh sheets on the bed, a new carpet, a new quilt, new blanket on the bed. Go somewhere Ooh. and get you a good hot uh, Calgon take-me-away bath. Uh, uh, grease yourself up with some, some oil, some baby oil, some Vaseline, or, 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 or whatever you want to grease yourself. Lay up in the bed and say, God, I thank you. Uh, uh, because now, uh, mm, 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 mm. Mm -mm. Now I feel better, God, because uh, the clutter is gone. Uh, I feel lighter now. Uh, I've had my enema. Uh, this toxic waste has been flushed out of me. Uh, so now, God, I feel like going on. Uh, I feel like I can make it another day. Uh, I feel like that I can conquer the whole entire world. Uh, I feel like I can tell the devil, not today. Not Pass on by. I'm not the one. Don't you mess with me. Don't you fool with me because I've been it. Uh, my body is in line with my mind. Uh, my mind yeah. is in line with my spirit. Uh, my spirit is in line with my mind, dictating to my mind how I ought to think. Uh, I'm thinking, devil, if you try it, I'm going to bind you. Because uh, the word of God feeds my spirit, and my spirit feeds my mind. So when you come before this body and say, I'm going to do this, not today, devil. Use a lying wonder. You've been lying ever since you've got to start. Uh, not today, because the blood of Jesus is against you. Uh, uh, because I'm clothed in his righteousness. Uh, he has given me the spirit of the, of, of the word of God, has told my mind, I have authority. Uh, I have license authority to use the name of Jesus. Uh, so now, since I done had my good bath, uh, done had my morning Cheerios, uh, I done had my Wheaties, uh, bring it on, devil, because uh, now I'm ready for you. Uh, I've lost some weight. I'm ready for the battle. Uh, uh, you should have caught me when I was 50 pounds heavier. You should have caught me when I was 40 pounds heavier, but not today, Yay. devil. Not this time. Mm -mm, no, brother, man, sister, girl, I'm fit. I'm ready for it, because uh, now I've sat at the breakfast table, uh, and I've met with my God. Uh, and he and I have had a wonderful time together. Uh, we've sipped on coffee. Uh, we've sh 
shared a bagel together, uh, some cream cheese, uh, and I'm just as happy as I want to be. Uh, and here you going to come bring me some sadness? Uh, oh, no, no. Mm, sadness is in the garbage can. Check it out. Uh, go out there and lift the lid. Uh, don't you see sadness there? Tell me what sadness looks like. Uh, it's dead. Uh, then you go jump in there with it, because uh, nothing that's dead can live up in here any longer. Because uh, I'm enjoying the fact uh, that I've had my good Wheaties breakfast. Uh, I've had my breakfast of champions, uh, and now I'm ready to ensue my day. Uh, somewhere along the way, I'm going to get with God again. Uh, and now we're going to have lunch. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to stimulate my mind a tad bit more uh, by stimulating mm -hmm. my spirit. Uh, I'm going to meditate on your word uh, both day and night. Uh, so now I, I didn't had my good bath, I didn't had my breakfast, I didn't had my lunch, uh, and now I can go on and make it through the balance of my day. Uh, because when I get back home, uh, things are going to be different. Uh, why? Because the clutter is not there anymore. Uh, uh, somebody sees you on the way and says, what's the matter with you? Uh, oh, I've lost some weight. Uh, I thought there was something different about you. Uh, yes, I've lost some weight. Uh, uh, I've come down two, three dress sizes. Uh, I've come down three, two, or three suit sizes. Uh, what did you use? Uh, tell me, what diet were you on? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I had to look at me in the mirror uh, and did not like what I saw. Uh, did not like the way I felt. Uh, at my age, I shouldn't feel this sluggish. Uh, I should have more vitality. Uh, I've tried taking this and I've tried taking that. Uh, but it has not worked for me. Uh, but I met a physician uh, that told me uh, that he needed to purge me, uh, purge my mind, uh, purge my spirit, uh, and purge my body. Uh, uh, so he put me on a strict diet uh, and told me what to eat and what not to eat, uh, what to feed and what not to feed. Uh, can you give me his number? Uh, yes, you can dial heaven, uh, and you can get in touch with Dr. Jesus, uh, and Dr. <laughs> Jesus will give you the same prescription. Uh, uh, stand on the scale. Uh, oh, you're a little bit obese. <laughs> Got too much weight going on there. Uh, let me take you to where Paul says, uh, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset you. Uh, lay it aside. Get rid of it. Uh, it ain't doing you no good. Uh, it's got you sluggish. It's got you stagnated. Uh, you're procrastinating uh, because the weight is too much for you to carry. Uh, you don't feel like you can take another thing. Uh, you feel like you cannot handle another struggle. Uh, you feel like you cannot be engaged in another battle. But I declare, if you lose the weight, uh, bless his name, uh, if you lose the weight, uh, you can stand up in the face of Beelzebub, in the face of that old serpent, the dragon, in the face of that devil from the pit of hell and say, not today, devil, not today. Bring it. Uh, uh, bring it, because I feel like Muhammad Ali. Uh, uh, I float like a butterfly, but I sting like a bee. Uh, because I have the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. Uh, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, so now I done got my energy. Uh, I've got my Wheaties. Uh, I'm pulling this thing down. Uh, I'm pulling down the things in my mind uh, that keep me depressed. Uh, I'm bringing into captivity everything uh, that is not like God. Uh, no, I'm not thinking like that. Uh, yes, I may have cancer, uh, but the devil is a lie. Uh, I'm not dying from that. Uh, oh, mm -mm, no, no, no. I'm going to lose my house. I'm not going to lose my mind over losing my house. Uh, oh. Because again, the earth is the lowest and the fullness thereof, uh, and they that dwell therein. Well, my child is on crack. That's all right. Uh, I'm not going to crack up because they on crack, uh, but I know a God uh, oh. that can deliver. Uh, so when I go and see them in the crack house, uh, when I see them in the rehab center, uh, I'm going to ease over to them, uh, and I'm going to tell that devil because I've been had my weeds. Uh, I'm a little oh. bit lighter now. Uh, I'm going tell the devil, no, no, that's my child. Uh, uh, mm -mm, no, no, I didn't have too many sleepless nights uh, trying to raise and feed and take care of that child. Devil, you're going to give me my child. Uh, what you mean you're not going to loosen? Loose and let him go. Because uh, whatever I bind on earth, uh, God's going to bind in heaven. Uh, whatever I loose in heaven, uh, 
loose in the earth, he's going to loose in heaven. That's my child. I don't care what you think about him. That's mine. God put him in my care. I'm not going to let you have him. Snatch that child up and say, devil, I dare you to back and come behind me. Uh, mm, no, no, no. Devil, no, no, no. I'm not taking this no more. Uh, you didn't had enough now. Uh, I've got my Wheaties. I didn't had my lunch. Uh, I yeah. had a real good meal. Uh, uh, then I had a craving for a little light snack before I hit the hay. So now I'm fit. I'm ready for the journey. Uh, why? Because this toxicness uh, that was in me, this bitterness, this anguish, this jealousy, this envy, this strife, it was yeah. in me. Why? Because I had a craving for the more of God. Uh, and the more I craved him, the less craving I had for the foolishness and the junk I used to feed myself. Uh, mm -mm, no, no. I feel better now because I'm feeding my mind uh, the word of God. Uh, now my hope is going to be fed. Uh, now my doubt has got to die. Uh, because I'm going to starve my doubt, but I'm going to feed my faith. Because uh, the word of God says that faith coming by hearing. Uh, I got to have hearing. Uh, I got to hear. My ears are unclogged now. Uh, I put a Q-tip in there. Uh, I pull out the wax. Uh, now I can hear clearly what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and when God speaks to me, uh, it invigorates me. Uh, my spirit comes alive. Uh, as Rubabel says, uh, is there any word from the Lord? Uh, there is a word from the Lord for those of you that are listening under the sound of my voice. Uh, the word is, what are you feeding? Uh, how are you feeding it? When are you feeding it? Uh, some things, whatever you feed, uh, that's the word from the Lord. Uh, whatever you feed, uh, it's going to grow. Uh, but whatever you starve, it's going to die. Oh. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Let it die. Oh, Lord Jesus. So you can live. Get the weight off. Get it off. Get the cares of this life off your mind. Because we are just journeying through here. This is not our home. Get rid of this stuff that's got you handicapped. You can't love like you ought to love. You can't get along with your wife. You can't get along with your children. Uh, so much hellishness going on in the family. Everybody, if I, if, if you can't, uh, you're married two minutes, and then if you have an argument for three, now you're ready to spend the next hour trying to get a divorce. Put that foolishness away. Oh. Let the argument die. Don't feed the argument. Don't feed your pain. Oh. Let it die. Because God wants to heal you. Oh. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I want to heal those that are under the sound of my voice. I want oh. to heal you. I want to heal you. I want you fit for the journey. Let's get into an exercise program. Let's get into a weight loss program. Let's get into a class where we can feed our minds the appropriate things. Whatever things are lovely, think on those things. Think of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he's done for you. And I promise you, your soul, your mind, and your body, y'all going to have a hallelujah good time. You're talking about having church, you'll have church like never before. When you begin to think, but you've got to train yourself what to think, how to think it, when to think it. And that thinking is fuel. It's transitioned. It's transmitted for what you feed into your spirit. So let the Lord heal your body. Let the Lord heal your mind. Let the Lord heal your spirit so that you can bring everything into balance and live a good, healthy, prosperous, favored life. That's what God wants for his people. You've crossed over Jordan now from 2013 in 2014. And God wants to give you the good of the land. Oh. But if you got all this weight on, you can't pick up your blessings. Because oh. oh. you weigh down too much with the cares of this life. You don't have to drive a BMW. You don't have to drive a Mercedes. You don't have to live in a multi-million dollar home to have the peace of the Lord or the joy Come of the on, Lord. Because if truth were to be told, some of these folks that's got all of that, 
are not happy. They have no peace. They have no joy. They just have stuff. So whatever is keeping you from maximizing your life and your walk with God, may I once again, in closing, dump it, get rid of it, starve it to death so that you may live. God bless you, Evangelist. God bless you. Thank God for your time today allowing me to have this time with you. What a word, what a word, what a word. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> now, if I may, if I may, and I'm, if I may uh, uh, just Boy. offer this brief little prayer, and then ah. I'm going to be gone. Mm. Father, again, I, I, I magnify thank you me. and honor you as the God of my salvation. Uh-huh. I thank you, God, for this time to be able to speak to these thy people. And I pray, God, that this word will not fall and have fallen upon deaf ears, but that it may be illuminating to someone, beneficial, that it may be encouraging them, that it may cause them to hope again, cause them to understand, God, why certain things exist in their lives. And if we come in alignment, and balance our lives out according to your word, our lives will become the way you've intended for them to be. We can come into obedience when we kill and starve rebelliousness. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the love that you have shed abroad in our hearts can be experienced when we starve the hatred and the bitterness and the anguish that we have toward those that have hurt and misused us. I pray, God, now that you heal the mind. Regulate the disturbed mind, that mother, that father, that brother, that sister, God, that is worried and worrying themselves into bad health. I pray, Mm. God, that you speak a word in their lives, that their minds may be refreshed, revived, rejuvenated, in understanding, God, that it's not over until you Mm. say it's Mm. over. So, God, bless these thy people now. So many people around the world are hurting. So many people don't feel like no one cares about them. But let them know that you love them. Someone has been given an ill-gotten doctor, unfavorable doctor's report. But I know that you are the bomb in Gilead. You are the physician. You are the healer, the master physician. You can speak and men can lay down and die. And you can speak and men can live again. Someone has had a door closed in their face, but I know that you are a way out of no way. So, God, I pray that the closed door, you guide them to an open door because you're able to close the door and open doors. Do it for these thy people. Lift the burdens of their hearts. I pray thee. Help them to understand they can give it into your care. To this I do ask in the precious name of Jesus, believing that it shall be done. And God, I'm so ever careful to give your name to praise because you're just an awesome God. You just blow my mind with the things that thou art able to do. So, Lord, I love you, and I love you because you love me so much. And God, help these thy people to become addicted to you. They're addicted to drugs, alcohol. They're addicted to pornography. They're addicted to, to, to their homes, their cars, to people, to flush, to the things of this world. But I pray that you give them an addiction for you, that they may crave you all the balance of the days of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.